So in the Mar-a-Lago document case in the Southern District of Florida, federal judge Eileen Cannon ordered that uh, a number of the witness interviews relating to the FBI and Department of Justice investigation into Donald Trump's theft of this national defense information be filed on the public docket in a substantially redacted form. You'll recall our reporting on this where uh, the government requested that all of the documentation remain under seal. Judge Cannon originally ruled that all of this information should be published on the public docket. Special Counsel Jack Smith filed a motion for reconsideration, which Judge Eileen Cannon granted for the most part, although she ordered regarding certain witness statements that they be published on the public docket with redactions regarding identifying information about the individual witness interview. So we actually have some bombshell witness interviews that show the level of cooperation of people in Donald Trump's inner circle against Donald Trump leading to the search and really through the present day and specifically there's an individual who's identified as person 16 who's described as having free access in the Oval Office to F POTUS to the former president to Donald Trump in other words and was in the Oval Office daily can you guess who person 16 is? But there's bombshell after bombshell about the info that person 16 told the FBI against Donald Trump. Let's go through that together. And as Hugo Lowell from The Guardian did some great job reporting on some of these tweets or ex post, whatever you call them these days, let's follow these together. So new partially redacted but unsealed exhibit in the Trump classified documents case shows the Department of Justice had cooperation from a senior Trump aide, including post-presidency. Now, who do you think person 16 is? Person 16, this is from the documents, person 16 had free access to Donald Trump and the Oval Office and was in the Oval Office daily. Person 16 was provided regular onboard briefings related to security matters to include the handling of classified materials. This was person 16's first security clearance since, then there are redactions. Person 16 recalled signing multiple non-disclosure agreements and read-ins, but did not recall specifics. Person 16 understood not to take classified records off campus, and Person 16 did not have a, and then there's some redactions, Person 16 did not handle or retain classified documents, Person 16 always left documents with others, and classified information was typically provided in oral briefings or viewed as draft documents in someone else's office. Classified documents did not, quote, pass through person 16 hands. Person 16 never sat in on a presidential daily brief. Person 47 from the White House Office of General Counsel provided training on the handling of presidential records. Person 16 understood predominantly everything was a presidential record. And to call person 47, that's one of the lawyers from the Office of General Counsel, with any questions. While person 16 had a paperless office, any records were dropped in a box for records. Person 16 did not use a burn bag. Person 16 vaguely recalled discussions with the White House Office of General Counsel. Person 16 and Person 47, something's redacted, about presidential versus personal records as it related to staff's personal notes, but does not recall the specific outcome. While at the White House, Person 16 was generally aware through conversations with Person 14, Person 34, and Person 37 that the, then there are redactions, was not getting records back. There was no process for the former president for Trump to designate records as personal records, nor was this ever discussed with person 14, person 37, or person 38. 
Person 36, uh, sorry, person 16 recalled witnessing a meeting in the Oval Office where, now there are redactions, handed Donald Trump a letter relating to the Georgia electors, which he wanted to send. The letter was folded in quarters. Then uh, it says, other people who were present asked person 16 for the letter back. Person 16 reached out to either person 34 or a valet to get it back. Person 16 recalled a valet retrieved it from the White House residence and returned it to redaction. Donald Trump routinely took documents from the Oval Office to the residence where he worked in the evenings. Person 16 observed Trump carry papers or an assistant or valet would place whatever papers that Trump worked on into a... And so uh, one of the things right there, it seems that he was observing uh, Jeff Clark from the DOJ turn over a plan about overturning the results in uh, Georgia. As Hugo Lowell describes, person 16 told the Department of Justice that they were not aware of a standing declassification order, as Donald Trump claimed, until they read it in news reports after the fact, added that person 24 who pushed that narrative was unqualified for a top government job they were angling for. Who do you think person 24 is? Let me read you some of the descriptions of the recently released documents. It goes on to say, person 16 was unsure exactly what the papers were, but believed them to be a, pic a mixture of newspapers and work documents, including classified documents. Person 16 recalled seeing classified folders and cover sheets, not specific documents with classification markings. Person 16 observed the same process of boxes moving to Marine One prior to Trump's travel. Person 16 was not aware of Trump declassifying any records other than the crossfire hurricane documents. Person 16 recalled conversations about declassifying documents relating to crossfire hurricane, particular between person 24, person 27, and person, and person 27. Person 16's last understanding prior to departing the White House was the documents were in person 27's office and there were issues related to the redactions. According to person 16, there was no standing declassification order. The first time person 16 heard that Trump had declassified everything was when it appeared in the media in 2022. Person 16 had never heard that while in the White House. Person 16 believed no one in the White House to include and list people um, and redactions. Any would testify that there was never such an order with the exception of possibly person 24. Person 16 believed person 24 was pushing the declassified everything line of thinking. Person 16 saw person 24 at the White House regularly. Person 24 bragged a lot about person 24's access while working for U.S. Congressman Blank, who was how person 24 first got into the White House. Person 24 knew a lot of people. Person 24 was friendly with, and there's a bunch of redactions. Person 16 thought person 24 was motivated to move up in the world and would brag about the unbelievable things person 24 had seen. Person 16 interacted with person 24 since January 2021, maybe once. They did not leave on the best of terms. Person 16 explained at one point that person 24 wanted the position of blank. Person 16 told person 24 he was not qualified for the job and relayed the same to person 24. Person 24 did not obtain the position. Person 16 explained person 24 was unhinged and crazy, but at one point was under real consideration for the job. As an example, once on Air Force One, person 16 observed person 24 or interact with Trump for 20 to 30 seconds and then turn around and declare he had a mandate from Trump. Person 16 believed any meeting person 24 had with Trump would be scheduled as a golf outing and possibly on a golf calendar. Goes on to say, person 16 made their own entreaty for Trump to return boxes from the White House and even asked one of Trump's children to convince him. It goes on to say that person 16 believed this information 
might have come from one of the Presidential Records Act representatives. Person 16 believed that the records would go back to the National Archives and, th and then it did not happen. Person 16 had a conversation with Person 1 about the missing documents. Person 16 first met Person 1 after November 2020. Person 1 worked for, and there's a bunch of redactions. In late October, early November 2021, Person 16 made Person 16's own appeal to Trump. Person 16 was on a conference call with Trump. Person 1 and possibly Person 27 and Person 37. Person 16 told Trump, whatever you have, give it all back. Trump wanted to know how anyone knew about the issue. Trump was informed it was all documented in writing. The response was essentially, quote, we'll check and think about it. Person 16 was unsure whose idea it was to have that call. Person 34 arranged the conference call. Person 16 spoke to multiple people around Trump to send the message that he needed to give the stuff back. Give it back. It belonged to the U.S. government and was not worth all the aggravation. Person 16 spoke to person, all these other people, and it says how person 16 knew from person 16 at the time at the White House that Trump sometimes needed to be messaged the same thing from multiple people close to him, including, then it's blank, person 16 was of the opinion that the most influence was blank and had more influence now given that person 15 was, and there's redactions, the message to blank was essentially, there are issues with the boxes. They belong to the government. Talk to your dad about giving them back. It's not worth the aggravation. Give them back. Person 16 then warned Trump he could be criminally charged if he didn't return the documents, even without a grand jury subpoena. Quote, whatever you have, give everything back. Let them come here and get everything. Don't give them a noble reason to indict you because they will. Former president was dressed in golf attire. Person 16 told him was not there. And then it goes on to say, whatever you have, give everything back. Person 16 learned that the boxes contained documents with classification markings prior to it becoming public information, but was unsure exactly when or from whom. Person 16 thought this information would have from, and there are more redactions right there. Person 16 told the FBI that there were more than 15 boxes Trump initially returned to NARA, and they thought Person 5, who they described as a total moron, was trying to create cover for his election fraud claims and crossfire hurricane. It goes on to say, Person 16 cannot say Person 16 had reason to believe the boxes were kept intentionally by Trump. However, Person 16 did know that there were over 50, bo 50 boxes and only 15 boxes went back. So a decision was made not to return all of the boxes. Post-January 2021, Person 5 constantly sent Trump what Person 5 had uncovered on the election fraud and maneuvered Person 5 way into, and that maneuvered Person 5 way into Trump's circle. Person 16 believes Person 5 was now trying to create blank to cover Person 5 for previous activities. Person 16 believe Person 49's records may reflect recent blank that did not reflect what actually transpired. Here's what we also learned that Trump valet Walt Nauta was allegedly told, quote, if even he gets charged with lying to the FBI, Trump will pardon you in 2024, per cooperating witness 16. So Trump's co-defendant, Waltine Nauta, was promised a pardon. We also learned that the code name for the Trump classified document case was known as, quote, plasmic echo based on the newly released documents on the docket. And it's also worth noting, as Kyle Cheney points out, that uh, witness that the witnesses, and specifically this person 16, was afraid to have the interview recorded for fear of reprisal. Person 16 refused recording of the interview 
despite being advised that not recording the interview would be anomalous compared to other witness interviews. Person 16 accepted that risk, stating having the interview recorded was a far bigger risk for him in the Trump world. Finally, in a passage about Trump's legal team, how they all come together, there's a detail that someone was trying to dress a certain way to get Donald Trump's attention. Who do you think this lawyer was who was trying to dress a certain way to catch Donald Trump's eye? It says, blank, referring to this lawyer, used to hang out in Trump's line of sight, dressed like blank, until whoever, he or she, was hired by Trump. Blank wanted, per 34, to sign a document about documents at Mar-a-Lago, to which person 34 ultimately declined. So who do you think that's referring to? So folks, some bombshells right there based on the documents that were released. Also, Kyle Cheney says that the FBI discussed doing loose surveillance of Trump's planes to see if he took any boxes with him from Mar-a-Lago on the day the Department of Justice attorneys went to meet with him. And one of the other documents here um, that uh, is from the National Archives points out that the original correspondence between Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un was missing. Also, the original poster board of the path of Hurricane Dorian that Trump marked up with the Sharpie was missing. Also, Trump took the letter that Obama left for him on his first day in office, in addition to all the other classified uh, documents and national defense information, like the nuclear codes and war plans. Anyway, big news, big, lots of evidence, a lot more than I thought we would get right there. Tell me what you think. Who do you think 16 is? Who do you think the lawyer trying to was dressed a certain way? Who do you think all the people are that I mentioned would love to hear your feedback? Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million subscribers. Thanks to your support. Have a great day.